In this video, I'm just going to give you a basic introduction for how you can start creating your own maze and what would be a maze without a little starting point, right? So I think I want my maze to start right here just because I'm going to be boring and that's where a lot of mazes start. So I need to look and see what ordered pair corresponds to this. And it's negative 8 on the x-axis and 5 on the y. So negative 8, 5. So in the little equation editor over here, I'm going to type the, the ordered pair, negative 8, comma, 5. And voila, there is my start. Now the cool thing about Desmos is you can do something called adding a label. And you can see that right there. So I'm actually going to click on that box. And I'm going to give it a label of start so that you can see where the starting point is. If I click the settings wrench right there, it lets me make the label bigger if I want to. Let's me make it vertical if I want to instead. Not a ton of options, but you know, better than nothing. And then if you click and hold the green dot right here, that gives you options for what the actual coordinate itself looks like. So you could change the color, you can make it a little X instead if you wanted to. There's a, a few like cool little things that you can do with it. I'm gonna leave it as a filled in dot though and I'm gonna leave it green because to me green means go. And now I need some obstacles for this thing to get through. Well, actually I need a finish, don't I? So I'm gonna make the finish somewhere. Uh, Maybe here, I guess. So let's look at what ordered pair I need. So on the x-axis, it's three. On the y-axis, it's negative five. So that'll be three. Negative five for the ordered pair for my finish. So I'm gonna type underneath this one. And I'm gonna type the ordered pair, three, negative five. I'm gonna click a label. And, oh, I don't know why I just did the word start, because obviously that's the finish. And I'm gonna click that and make that vertical too, just because I like the way it looks better. And I'm gonna make it big. Um, and I'm cool with that color, I'm okay. So now we gotta add some obstacles in between. And you gotta do a little pre-planning before you can actually you know, get your obstacles in there. So I'm kind of looking and I'm thinking to myself, okay, I want like a skinny wall that's gonna be somewhere around like here. Let's see. I'm gonna make a wall that it's gonna have to kind of go around right about here. So I have to pre-plan the ordered pairs that I'm going to use to make, this is what it's gonna look like. It's gonna look like kind of like a, a skinny wall right there. Um, but I gotta pre-plan what the vertices, in other words, what the corners of it are gonna be. So I'm just gonna write these down for a second. So negative seven, four is the ordered pair right there. Negative two, four negative two, three, negative seven, three. So those are the ordered pairs that I'm gonna use that I've kind of pre-planned out. I've written them down, because this isn't me graphing, obviously, this is just me writing on the computer screen here. So I have to actually get those coordinates on there. So I'm going to type underneath to start another um, function. And because I'm going to list four ordered pairs at once, I'm going to do something called making a list. So to do that, I'm going to make a capital L, and I'm going to hit equals. By the way, I totally should have mentioned, it's a really great idea if you're practicing this along with me, like underneath on this uh, activity, you know that there is a blank coordinate grid for you to be practicing this on too. So L stands for list. I'm going to put equals. I'm not going to put the curly Q brackets that we've used in previous examples. I'm putting the square brackets. And then I'm going to put each of those ordered pairs inside of those brackets. So I'm going to do negative seven. And again, I wrote them down so that I would have them. Negative seven, four. Negative two, four. Negative seven, three and negative two, three. And then I'm gonna close it with a bracket. The reason it's telling me right now that um, it's got the little message, I did it wrong on purpose just so you could kind of see what I'm telling it to do. Remember that equations sitting next to each other 
means multiplication. So by just putting these coordinates right next to each other, I'm telling the calculator to multiply these coordinates essentially, which they can't do. So I need to put commas in between each one so that Desmos knows that I'm really just saying, hey, give me those four points. And then you'll see, voila, those coordinates up here, right there, once I get done with the list. So we've got the vertices or the corners for the first wall I want to build, but we don't have the actual shape yet. So I'm going to go beneath and I'm going to do what's called a polygon function. So a polygon, in case we have forgotten from earlier grades, is any shape that has straight lines and vertices. So like a circle isn't a polygon because it's round, but as long as it's a closed figure that has straight sides, it's a polygon. So we're gonna type in the word polygon here into the function. So polygon is how we spell that. And we're saying, hey, we wanna make a list out of this L. So polygon, we're gonna put it in parentheses. So what I just told the computer to do was take all four of those individual coordinates, which are labeled by the list L, and turn them into a polygon. Now, this doesn't look like a rectangle, does it? Which is what I wanted it to look like. Not that this isn't a cool shape, it's just not what I had in mind. So I wanna to explain to you exactly why it looks the way that it does. And it's because of the order that I typed the coordinates into the equation editor, which is an important point. So I typed negative seven, four in first. So this was the first one I typed in. Then I typed in negative two, four. So then I typed in negative two, four. So you can see that it made a straight line going from one to two. But then the next one that I typed in was negative seven, three, which is this one right here. So I told the computer graph one and then two and then three and then finally graph the fourth one. So that's why it made the shape look like that. So if you want it, not that this isn't a really cool shape, maybe that's the way you want it to look, but I wanted it to look like a rectangle. This actually would make kind of a cool, you know, maze, maze uh, shape. Um, so maybe I want to save this for later, but in order to get it to actually be a rectangle, I need to trade the order. I need to take the negative two, three, and I need to cut it and I need to paste it here so that now it goes literally like one, so that it does it in the right order. So like one, two, three, and four. But again, you can make some really cool shapes that way and that's actually something for you to play with. That would be pretty darn cool. So now I wanna make another shape. I want to make uh, another rectangle. Let's say I want to make another obstacle. Eh, so I've gone down. Maybe once I've started and I've headed down this way, I want to put an obstacle here that's kind of going to block whoever, you know, them trying to get through. So that's where I'm going to put my next wall. So just like before, I need to plan out my vertices. Oops, sorry, I didn't mean to do that. I'm gonna plan out my vertices or my corners of where that wall's gonna go. And so those vertices are gonna be um, negative nine, two, negative three, two, negative three, one, and negative nine, one. And I'm gonna be sure to actually write them in order this time that's gonna actually make a rectangle. So I'm gonna erase the writing. I'm gonna go over here to the editor. Now, I'm not gonna put in L all by itself because I already have a list. So I'm gonna put in L2, and that stands for list number two because I already have my first list here, right? So now I'm gonna put in my second list. I'm gonna say L2 equals, and I'm gonna put the square brackets, and I'm gonna type in all of those ordered pairs with commas in between them. Oh, 
Hopefully you're doing this with me because that would be good. And so you can see all four of those coordinates, all four of those vertices popped up right there. So how do I turn them into a polygon? I'll bet you know what to do. Pause the video. It would be great for you to try to turn those into a polygon yourself. So I'm going to assume you paused the video and you've tried that yourself. So yeah, you're going to type in the word polygon. And we're going to put in parentheses L2 because that's one we want to make the polygon for. And once again, I goofed. Oops, I said I was going to put them in the right order and then I forgot. I ended up doing negative 2 first. Negative, or I did negative 9, 2, and negative 3, 2. I went in that order. But then I went over there to negative 9, 1 again. So remember that's what it did, which I'm going to keep it because it's kind of a cool shape. It went there and then there, and then there. So that's why it looks kind of a little cool and different. So now um, I've got my second polygon in there. So I think you're getting the idea about how you can add your own shapes. And it doesn't even have to be rectangles. You can make polygons by adding coordinates, you know, and just, you can make them all kinds of random, pretty cool shapes, and you can connect them by doing exactly that same function. So I think you get the idea about how to make shapes. And so let's assume I've gone through, I've made a whole bunch of shapes, I'm ready to share my graph with a friend to see whether or not they can pull off, or actually after I've made a maze, I kind of wanted to see whether or not I can pull it off. So Right now, this area over here is pretty darn cluttered, right? Because I've got all these equations and stuff to represent the shapes. So we are going to do something that's called hiding these shapes. And here's how we're going to do it. We are going to hit the plus button. We are going to add a folder. And I'm actually going to drag this folder up here to the top and then I'm going to take each of these items and I'm going to click right here I'm gonna click and hold I know you can't see my mouse on here but I'm gonna click and hold it and drag it up towards the folder so I'm gonna click oh oops didn't mean to do that so I'm gonna drag it up here and I can tell that it's now in the folder because there's that line, that gray line appears right next to it. So that one is in the folder. Now I'm going to drag this list up to the folder. Once again, you'll notice, same deal. It's got that line. So now I know that's in the folder too. Drag another one until I make sure it's got the line on it. So I'm going to drag all of these items. I hope you're doing this with me. And they're now in the folder, and again, I can tell that because every one of these has a line next to it. So to kind of declutter this area, I'm going to click, so right now, the little arrow next to the folder is pointing down. That means that all of this stuff is showing. So if I click the arrow, that's going to like, it's kind of like closing the folder. So now... I still see all of the shapes here, but all the equations that were like cluttering things up aren't there anymore. So that's really cool. Don't worry, they're still there. If I click the button, look, they're still right there. So now I can just, um, I could put some directions where it says enter a note. I could say something like solve the maze or whatever. I mean, you don't have to type anything if you don't want to. It does look a little bit weird there that there's a note. Um, an empty note there and that might confuse some people and think that that's where they need to start entering the lines So you might want to go ahead and put something there that has like some directions um, But that is kind of a basic introduction for how you should um, how you can add shapes And again, you can add all kinds of different ones. You can add triangles. You can add like anything that has a polygon We're gonna talk later. I have some advanced materials for once you get this, the rectangles down, an extension for this activity, if you'd like to learn how to add round shapes, we can certainly do that. Um, but we should probably start with the rectangular ones first. So those are just some basics for how to... Oh, and then, duh. Um, so you're going to need to... I'm sorry. I'm going to need to give it a title so that this saves, actually. First and foremost, OMG, please make sure you're logged in. 
Otherwise, all this hard work you've done is not going to save. So make sure you're logged in. Give your graph a title. So for example, I'm just going to say my maze. Save it. And so this will actually be saved to your login. So if you go over here, you can see I've actually um, saved some other things. So it says like current graph. Here's another one that I saved earlier. So anytime you go to log in from now on, your mazes are all going to, your maze is going to be saved right there. And then you can just open it up and you can keep working on it. Um, it'll always be saved. So that's really cool. And then you'll be able to share your graph any way that you want. Um, for I'm going to ask you to, to submit to me your, your maze once you've got it completed. So you're going to, to share it, you can just click on this little button that says share graph. And you can just copy and then you can paste it into uh, the assignment box that I'm going to give you so that I can see your cool new maze.